The success of this country's future depends on the investment of our youth. However, crime, substance abuse, and unsafe sexual activity are risk factors many young people face. This is especially a concern in some Latino communities, and for the next few minutes, we'll discuss the underlying issues that lead to these types of health disparities. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined by Dr. Mark Edberg from the Avance Center for the Advancement of Immigrant and Refugee Health at the George Washington University. Dr. Edberg, welcome to the program. Thank you. Why is this group so vulnerable to these issues? Well, you know, like a lot of, we, we look at this as a health disparity issue. In other words, this is a group that has an unequal situation with respect to this, this particular problem. And that's because of what? Social economic issues, culture? It's, it's the result of a number of factors working together in the community that, 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 that work together to create that kind of vulnerability. And so it's me, a perfect storm. It's a perfect storm. And one way to think about it is if you think of, let's just take an example of a hypothetical youth. Sure. And I'll call him Charles. Sure. So uh, Charles is in school, but Charles has some language barriers. School does not have a lot of support for that, so Charles is having trouble in school. There's not a lot of support anywhere for him in terms of being able to stay in school. So he's on the verge of dropping out and maybe, maybe will drop out. Um, there are a lot of other kids that he knows that are in that same kind of situation. And let me throw another little okay. scenario in there. Let's say that Charles's parents maybe are high school dropouts themselves. I was just getting to that point because when we think of a community like this, we have to think of the individuals in the community and then all the other layers that work together. So there's the family layer, the school layer, the, the community itself, and, and even things like the way the community feels about a situation. So, so we have Charles in that situation. At home, uh, maybe he, he is living with one parent. They're in a crowded family situation, so can't really go home and do homework anyway. Um, his, let's say his mom is, uh, speaks some English, but not that much, and she just, she's not familiar with, particularly where she's coming from, being able to communicate to the school, even know anything about what Charles is supposed to do, what's happening, uh, and the same would be true for other social services. She just doesn't have that kind of background to be able to communicate there. So when he goes home, let's say to do homework, there's nothing really, there's no support, and it's not because of there's no intention to provide support. It's just not... The infrastructure not is not there. The infrastructure is not there. And then you combine that with um, they are living in a community that is marginalized. It's isolated. They don't, people don't generally have a lot of access to support. Um, and, and the community being accustomed to that situation, being accustomed to that marginalized situation, there may be sort of a, a shared feeling that it's really, there's not much you can do about sure. any problem. So Dr. Edberg, now that you've painted the situation, which mm -hmm. is unfortunately very common in this country, mm -hmm. how do you get to the root of the problem, A, but also B, and more importantly, how do you solve the problem? Yeah. There, there are a lot of programs out there right now that deal with one of those specific things. So there are substance abuse prevention programs, there are sex risk prevention programs, there are violence prevention programs. Many of them tend to, to focus on one, one domain of the problem. It will be a school curriculum. So let's say Charles gets a school curriculum about one of these things, but when he goes up back out into the community, you know, the situation he faces, that school curriculum, while not bad in itself, right. Um, isn't enough. It's not holistic. It's not the whole it's entire. It's not holistic. Not so uh -huh. what we try to do, we're taking a, an approach that's called positive youth development. And, and the idea behind this approach is that um, you can work to build capacity, skills, and connections uh, between Charles and his family and the community. But you also, you can't just leave it at that. You have to work at the other levels. So you have to be able to provide, build, start building the supports in the community that will help Charles thrive, basically. Mm -hmm. Dr. Edberg, we've got about 15 seconds left. Mm -hmm. Are you confident that this study will yield results? Yes, and we're going to be documenting that. All right, thank you, and thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Tranum. Have a great day.